we're gonna go with the second place winner, which is Mora Conda. I'm just gonna be calling them Mora. So let's see how they did. Now, normally I like putting these things as um, four times speed. However, it's been brought to my attention due to Cavill Cadence. Let me know if I spelled or you know pronounced your name wrong. That if I speed up the game, there's a higher chance that things go all haywire and that we get, you know, messed with the glitches. So in order to um, counterbalance that, I'm gonna go with one of two paths. I'm either A, gonna just let the whole game play out, or B, I might cut out some parts that may be slower and less interesting, especially if there's nothing new for me to share. However, I think I can fill the space with some commentary. Like, for example, comparing this with the run that I just did where I got up to zone 5. You will never be able to see it because my replay came out all messed up. But one thing that I really liked about my game was the fact that I was able to get these like little spirits. I'm still getting used to them, but it looks like Mora here is taking full advantage of the shopkeeper being in front of them. So Mora is making sure that all the enemies that they kill are right in front of them. Except for in times like this where there's a hallway. Also, if you have noticed, there is some lag in the recording. Why? I don't know. The AC is on in my room. I have my fan on my laptop. Yet there's still a little bit of lag. But I'm hoping that my audio is clear enough that it makes up for the kind of weird, funky way that the computer is replaying the playthrough. Also, I have a very big feeling that this ring is a blood weapon. Because throughout my run, I saw that my character kept having that like little healing sprinkle. So I was wondering what was that like, what was going on with that? I didn't have a chance to mention it during my playthrough, but I'm going to mention it here. I think the mystery weapon is some kind of blood weapon because every once in a while the character will have that like little sparkle and like, ha, ah, I'm healed, which is really nice. It was really interesting here how Mora tried to dig and try to find the entrance of the shop or an alternative entrance. And I think that move by Mora was really interesting in trying to manage the spirit and the ghost and making sure that they weren't stuck in a bad situation where both the ghost and the spirit wanted to hurt them. Now here the dragon is going to try to attack them. So we're going to see what happens here. I thought about doing this in my own run, but I really didn't know how to make this work and make the dragon destroy the wall. Oh, I see here. So Mora's gonna do one of these moves that I see a lot of these experts do, which is having the dragon attack the shopkeeper. This is really beneficial because the shopkeeper just freaks the fuck out and like runs away from the shop. And the dragon just like chases him out. So that way you can just get all the items you want. Now here, I love this item. There's no reload, it attacks from a distance, and it's just amazing. I love this item so much. And I also wonder what Mora's gonna do with this box here, because when I encountered this box, I was like, stuck. But, you know, clearly, clearly Mora's made out of tougher stuff than I am. Mora managed to figure out that, like, little puzzle in which they just got the box to fall down to the next floor amazing now i'm wondering if they're gonna pick up the shopping spree coupon i don't see why not i can't think of a reason why you wouldn't want to get it now let's see here are they gonna kill the shopkeep can they is it dangerous for them yeah i think it's a little dangerous so see they just healed another floor now, is it floor related? Is it a blood weapon relation? Is it like it's part healing? I don't know what's up with that mystery ring, but every floor, every time, you know, the character's healing and I don't know why. So here, it looks like Mora's cutting through some walls and 
just trying to balance out the two spirits. Very interesting to watch how they do their enemy management. Love watching it every single time. I'm wondering here how they're going to handle the whole crate situation. I'm kind of seeing what they're doing, but like if they push it down, it's going to go down to the next floor. And then it's going to get stuck here. I gave up at this point. I believe with my barrel, I didn't try to push it any further. Ah, I see. So, something that I didn't take advantage of, in hindsight, is the fact that this is a gold bow. So I'm thinking that they do unlimited amount of damage after stepping on um, a, gold, a pile of gold. Which I clearly did not take advantage of. But Mora is taking full advantage of it because Mora is an expert and I am just a little Padawan who's just learning from every single playthrough. Love to see how they're just, you know, letting their the, um, the Minotaur get to them. And all is well with that. I also wanted um, to wish you all a happy Memorial Day weekend while I had a chance and while, you know, we're just watching this game play. As you probably noticed, there was no real video that came out, I believe, on Friday. But that's because I usually don't record Necro Dancer videos on Friday nights because I'm usually spending that time playing actual board games instead of playing video games. Just felt like I'd throw it out there just in case you guys were wondering about that upload schedule. I typically don't like doing my recordings when I have guests at home and they want to play tabletop games. Alrighty, so here purchasing a random item. So here, I shuffled for rings. I know my friend, well not my friend, but I know one of the guys from my Discord community that I'm a part of, they like getting the courage ring. What I ended up going for is I went for the, um, for the ring that does piercing and I found that really helpful in my run. They ended up getting the cheaper shops ring, which works out really great for them because they're going for a score run where the amount of gold you have matters. And here they're just figuring out a way to kind of attack their doppelganger and they did it beautifully. Okay, so here they're blowing up the shrine and using the shrine. I'm wondering if they use their scroll. I did not in my run. I always get paranoid as to when to use it. I do believe that if you use it and you don't have, you use it and you have a full amount of hearts or you use it and you have a low amount of hearts, you get a potion so that way you can get revived. But I don't know 100% as you know my statement just goes with like it's either this extreme or the other extreme. So I don't really understand how that works. Or if I have, it was a while ago that I knew how it works. like. Right now, at this very moment, I don't know. And now they're just checking on, on that shopkeeper, but they didn't see anything they liked. And now they're doing a speedrunner tactic, which is just going to the next floor. There's the glass jaw. I kind of passed on that as well. I don't really see a point to it, but maybe it's a really good item. Since Mora didn't get it, I don't feel too bad about missing it. Mora is now able to break everything that they see. Um, are they gonna- they're missing out on the Ice Spear Familiar? Let me tell you, that Ice Spear Familiar and me, we're BFFs, okay? I love my Ice Spear Familiar. But maybe it slows down their plays, and maybe that's why Mora did not go for it. I don't know. So Mora here is just opening up that treasure chest. I'm wondering what other item Mora is looking for, if not the gold bow. Because from what I learned from Cavill Cadence, the gold weapon is not only just good because, you know, for example, this is a golden bow, but it also does unlimited amount of damage when you pick up gold. And then on top of that, you get an extra piece of gold for each kill. And that extra piece of gold is affected by your multiplier. So for example, right now they are at that three times multiplier. So for each kill, they're getting three extra pieces of gold, which is working really well in their favor. So I imagine that there's really no other item that would bring them more joy than this bow. 
But they keep checking the chest and it could be out of sheer curiosity. It could be because they're looking for something. I don't know. But Mora is definitely doing great. So Mora took some damage from the Shrine of Risk. A little sad, but you know, had to happen. So I'm trying to see what Mora is doing here. It looks like Mora is trying to lure the dragon into the shop and making the dragon break the gold walls. I think Mora may also be trying to attack the shopkeeper. But using the dragon and the dragon's being a little stubborn about it. But in the end, Mora was able to get the shopkeeper hurt. Make sure that the shopkeeper was low enough health to kill the shopkeeper. And they just bypassed all the items. Which I don't blame them. I like the monocle. But, you know, the score runners, they like their crown of greed. Which is great for them. Doesn't give me any survivability. So, like, I never try to go after it. I think even if I found it in a run, I wouldn't take it unless, like, I had no other item. I really don't see a point of it for me. So now they're transmorgifying their items. They got the battle shovel and now, oh, they're going for the shovel of courage. Okay, they're going for the blood shovel. We love to see a good blood shovel play. I know that Biggie would have wanted the ring of courage and I can't wait to see Biggie make it on the leaderboards with their ring of courage. But it's really nice seeing uh, the different playstyles and the different ways that each, like, score runner handles their plays. I would be so terrified of this strategy. Like, I'm always panicking when I'm, like, low on hearts. But these score runners, they don't know what fear is. They're like, oh, I'm at low health? No problem. I mean, granted, they have the apple and the cheese, but, like, even that's not enough for me. Like, I need a lot of security. Especially because these runs, you can't do multiple of them because once you die, that's it. But the score runners, they're brave. That's all I gotta say about that. So let's see what else Mora is doing. It looks like Mora is just killing enemies, trying to get as much gold as possible. I do know that with the crown agreed, they are losing a little bit of gold with every single step that they take. But Mora seems to be okay with that. <sighs> I am so sorry, guys. It is like 11.30 at night over here. Alright, so here is the chess piece showdown. I feel like with the... Um, with the golden bowed, th this is so easy. Because you can attack the chess pieces from the side. And it's really handy. So in this game, they got a flawless victory. I got attacked by a queen um, from a pawn that turned into a queen. Yeah, I'm thinking that the healing that was happening on every floor did happen from that mysterious ring. Because now they're not healing every floor like they used to. And here we have Mora just breaking down every single wall. Making the most out of their blood shovel. I think once Mora gets, I believe, the healing spell that you get later on. They're going to really be using that blood shovel to like the fullest. I'm like really enjoying to see like... How much damage Mora's doing. Mora just picked up the grenade charm, which great for Mora. Horrible for me. I know the grenade charm during my run hurt me a lot more than it probably helped me. I don't get how the grenade charm works. I mean, I guess I logically get it, but like playing with it, I don't get it. Like I use it and then like every single time, like I get hurt by it. So Mora here is just trying to figure out how to break that barrel apart. And it looks like Mora finally figured it out. So they got a bomb. And now they're here, you know, dancing across the dangerous floor. I'm wondering where they're trying to go. Are they looking for anything? 
I guess they saw the gold down there. Mora does not say no to any sh strangler piece of gold. Alright, Mora is attacking those pusher guys. Mora is going after the skeletons. And Mora is now speeding things up. Go, Mora. Now, here is something that Mora did that was interesting. So when Mora attacked the purple spirit, Mora stepped away from the wall because that's where the spirit respawned. Now, that is one thing that I need to get better at when it comes to the spirit. I know that I have to attack the spirit on the other side of me. What I don't realize is that sometimes when I'm next to the wall... I can't even attack the spirit! And that's because the spirit is in the wall, so instead the spirit takes that chance to hit me. So that's something I need to get better at. But Mora, you know, Mora knows what Mora's doing. I got attacked by that monster right there. And Mora's also doing a really good job at using those grenades. Like, it looks like you definitely have to have some distance between you and the bomb. Otherwise, you get the pow pow. Great enemy management here. They got the ham now, so Mora is going to be able to use the blood shovel a lot more times now. Impressive to see how Mora handles those spirits. I just definitely need to get better at that. Mora got those, um... I like calling them, like, little goblins. They have, like, little scyther-like arms that are, like, blades on their arms. Which are really cool. They make me think about, like, little scythers. Now, I wonder if Mora's gonna take this challenge or Mora's just gonna break these walls. I think Mora's just gonna break the walls. Oh no, Mora took the challenge. Good job, Mora. Mora took on the challenge and destroy the walls. But I'm assuming that's because Mora gets gold with every monster that they kill. So for Mora, it's really beneficial. For me, though, I know better than to try to attack those monsters. That is a quick way to early grave. So Mora is doing the enemy management here. Having them all funnel in through the, um, the shop walls. So good job, Mora. I know I kind of freaked out when I was dealing with that. Mora has no fear though. Mora takes care of everything. Like a champ. And I think it's as um, Cavill Caden said. Since I'm watching this at normal speed, the replay is not going all funky. So you might be able to see Mora actually complete this run, which is awesome. Now let's see here, what other stuff is going on? Well, Mora sped up things a little bit. And Mora is just handling those um, goblin scyther things pretty well. I think with the ballet shoes, they really don't risk any kind of, um, of hazard in terms of missing out on any beats. Oh, interesting. So Mora stood still. And now, are they having the Leprechaun duplicate the piles? Interesting way of getting the Leprechaun to, um... To kind of make piles of gold. Okay, good, good. Oh! See, I never know which one of these have, like, the secondary shopkeeper. Really nice, um, way to check, though. Mora was able to get more food. I wonder if they're gonna go after the gluttony charm. They are. Because Mora is a glutton for pain and a glutton for food. Now Mora has a full 10 hearts that they can use and manage for the rest of the game. All right, Mora is handling all the enemies. I know during my run, I struggled with those beetle enemies. Not because I don't know how to kill them, 
but more because I struggled finding a way to get them to come one tile closer to me when I had my bow. So it looks like Mora took some damage from the weapons here. Or from the musical instruments. So this will not be a perfect victory for Mora. But that is fine. Alright. The Shrine of Risk took its damage. And Mora is now going after the enemies on this floor. Now I gotta say, compared to my previous experience here. I gotta say, this did not seem so overwhelming now i don't know it's because i'm getting better or just because of my set of items that i was able to manage things i do know that with the spiders i'm still struggling on how to fight them because the spiders still like attack me at every turn and um the guys who parry i'm getting so much better with them now the only thing is that it's a little bit difficult when I have the bow so I kind of had hit them a bunch of times until they got close to me Ooh, look at that treasure chest well let's see what's in it oof so I don't know if Mora's messing up or if we have a desynchronization happening I'm gonna say we are in team desynchronization Mora went into two booby traps. Mora overlooked a healing spell. So we have a case of desyncing. How unfortunate. So Mora, thank you so much for your play. I do know you got a lot further than this, but because of the desyncing, it seems like your play ended a little bit prematurely. However, it was enough for us to see that you made it to 10K. We saw that you collected all those cool amulets. You got your ring of gold, you have your gold bow. And it was so cool watching your run after I had my really good successful run because I was able to notice things that I didn't notice in my run. And I also was able to watch how you did the grenades, which I totally messed up and kept getting hurt on, but that you handled like a champ. So thank you so much everybody for watching and remember that you are loved. Bye.